Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. If you're loving what you're hearing on the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, go out and tell two friends today. Show them how easy it is to subscribe to the show. The Real Estate Espresso Podcast is available on more than 20 different platforms, and wherever you listen to podcasts, you're sure to find the Real Estate Espresso Podcast. Go spread the love around. Why keep all this goodness to yourself? On today's show, we're talking about what we can learn from the Boy Scouts and Girl Guides. I was speaking with an investor this week who's placing an offer on an 80-unit apartment complex in a small town. We're talking a town of 6,000 people, of 6,000 people, where the nearest population center is four hours away. And this investor is looking at this small town located nine and a half hours from where they live. I asked why were they looking at this specific small town and the answer came back that the apartments were inexpensive enough that they should generate cash flow with relatively high leverage. She thought these apartments were a bargain. So I asked a simple question. The Boy Scouts have Apple Day every year where hundreds or maybe even thousands of Boy Scouts fan out across the city and sell apples. Where should the Boy Scouts choose to sell their apples? Should they go to the most ex- should they go to the most affluent part of the city with the highest income? Or should they go to the most economically depressed part of the city to sell their apples? The Girl Guides sell cookies every year. Where should they aim to sell their cookies? Should they go to the most affluent part of the city with the highest income? Or should they go to the most economically depressed part of the city to sell their cookies? Well, the answer to both was obvious. The Scouts and the Girl Guides should go to the most affluent part of the city to sell apples and cookies. So I asked her why. Why should the Boy Scouts and Girl Guides go to the most affluent part of the city to sell apples and cookies? Well, the answer was not that surprising either. She said, well, there's more money. They'll sell more apples. In some cases, they'll even get donations, and some people won't even take the apple. In those cases, it's as if they sold the same apple more than once. The next question was revealing. If you would go to the most expensive part of the city to sell apples and cookies, then why would you treat real estate any differently? Why would you go to the most affluent customers for apples and cookies, but not real estate? I had, the vir- I had virtually the same conversation that same evening with no less than three investors. All of them were looking to buy inexpensive real estate in small towns. It was like a wave of groupthink had overtaken the room. If you're particularly astute at arguing a point, you might point out that the cost of the apples don't change depending on where you sell the apples. So, of course, you would go to the place where you get the most money because the cost of the apples are constant, which then begs the obvious question, well, does a sheet of drywall cost more in a more expensive area, or does supplying that sheet of drywall for construction cost the same irrespective of where you put it? Does a gallon of paint cost more in an expensive area than it does in an inexpensive area? Is a furnace or a water heater any more expensive? Are windows any more expensive? Well, clearly they're not. They cost exactly the same. What varies is the value of the land. And the value of the land is governed by the laws of supply and demand. That land is more expensive because it's got higher demand. It is deemed to be more valuable. And therefore, it's going to hold its value. I can tell you from firsthand experience, the only times I've lost money in real estate have been in lower quality assets. Selling real estate and renting real estate to people who don't have the financial means to actually afford what it is that you're offering to sell. The next question was also revealing. If you had more capital to invest, would you buy that same asset or would you be looking for a higher quality asset? They conceded that they would probably seek a higher quality asset in a better location. When asked why they don't have access to more capital, they responded, well, that, that's all the money they had available to invest. So I asked the question again, because they didn't really answer the question. I didn't ask how much money they had available to invest. I asked why they didn't have more capital available to invest. It was at that point they realized that they didn't know how to get access to more capital if they needed it. So let me get this straight. Because you don't know how to raise capital, you're going to make a bad investment rather than overcoming your biggest limitation, which is learning how to raise money. I had another conversation with a lawyer this week who wants to grow as a developer. He asked if he should start flipping houses as a stepping stone to becoming a developer. So I responded with a very simple question. I reminded him that he went to law school and going to law school is difficult. But because going to law school is difficult, would it have made any sense for him to train as a legal assistant instead of going to law school as a stepping stone to becoming a lawyer? And clearly the answer is no. All of these conversations have one thing in common. In each case, the investor sees an obstacle and takes their eye off the target instead of overcoming the obstacle. 
Somehow, the Boy Scouts and the Girl Guides have it figured out. They know how to maximize their revenue on a Saturday morning going door to door. They know where to look to find their best customers. But then real estate investors work in the sterile environment of a spreadsheet that can often obscure the reality of the situation that is so clearly visible in the real world with boots on the ground. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.